Hello everybody, I'm Peter Glob And I'm Crystal And today we are reviewing Ruby Volume 5 Chapter 9 I can only see this episode be one of the worst episodes of this volume Probably the second Yeah, it's pretty much the second Oh so let me discuss that later in the video. Let's just first review and then discuss it. Alright? Alright. Now, the way we start this episode off is with the. Sorry, how should we call the, the villains? Although I wonder how we should call the team. I uh, honestly, I think that about now every single good, good team that's gonna be made of consists of four or five people. Should have a name. Yeah, pretty much. Tell me in the comments. So let. So maybe you could tell me in the comments how you you would call this team. Team. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Now the way it's kind of begun is Raven cleaning her, making sure that her weapon is ready. And then when Vernold comes. To basically tell them the Salem's four Salem's two elites and two minions have come along. Yeah, it was pretty hilarious. And the way that Raven is like is like weird. I don't remember ordering so many guests. Either I'm losing my memory or my soldiers. La lost their spines. Basically, making make insulting every single one of their bandits. Which leaves the question: Why does she have them? Them and not punishes them? I don't know. I guess since most of them are part of her family, and the fact that she basically says the bandits more of her family than her actual family, it's kind of that. Old, but it's actually confusing now. I think about it. Yeah, that's true. So, base said that they are argument with someone made a funny scene when basically Susan not being able to talk because of her phone issue and Raven not being able to hear it through her helmet, which was so hilarious. Yeah, they basically just do and state. And because Raven isn't aware of anything, which does bring up the question, how, when will Watts and Tyrion assemble, assemble, because Inna does seem to be pretty young, so she makes sense, but Watts and Tyrion, I mean, we know Hazel was at that time, but them, for some reason, not, yeah. I do like the insults the way, yeah, talk, Raven of course insults the team saying how they're now fat, L like basically saying, you two minions are basically equals, and those two other ones don't really pose any kind of fun because they're more like street rats you, ju you just picked up, and basically, uh, call Watts just an uneasy and scientist, which, is that a fan in the Maybe, I don't know, it's kind of hard to remember how this stuff. Yeah, I have Watts comments and saying, except the fact that I was a doctor, if I was pretty spot on. Also, we can't get a, a little funny joke about Cinder's final name, which apparently may not be her real name, Fall. Yeah, that's true. But, <laughs> I, I would just... You know what would be better if they if what's also said I'm a scient I will also put myself as a doctor and the uh, green hair chick as a as Cinder's bitch, but alright. To totally. And now funny thing is the basically when they're talking can they base convince Raven to put to have no uh, come out and show up. And because they aren't really aware which one is, it could just be another girl that's just, you know, there. 
She basically does the whole wind fin. Which basically causes what and Mercury's suit to be dusty. It's and they basically clean themselves up. Yeah, I gotta explain from what's that, but for Mercury, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. After that, they talk. They basically state that only thing they want is the maiden. Also, there's an interesting scene in. The I don't know how many people are going to be reading in. You know, that is, we know Cinder's a maiden. We know Van Nol is a maiden, who apparently is lost in the world, but... What about the other two maidens? I mean, they're not brought out, reference or anything, really. I mean, it might be possible that Winter is the Winter Spring Maiden. Her name and the fact that she's from Atlas is does kind of point at, but what about the fourth one? I don't know. Maybe they are just. Maybe it just so happens. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Now the next fit. So yeah, after that, maybe is this you should make a fear about that where they are in the end of the volume. Yeah, probably. Now, what basically happened after? Yeah, after that discussion, but. Basically, Raven makes a very good point saying, Ink. Alright. These kind of you know, things, like trust giving you my, her so to unlock them relics, is usually built on trust. But, sorry to say, I don't trust any of you. So she basically bargains and says, If you want. Spring to unlock the relic. You had to kill my brother first. And I just do like how the comparison between Cinder and Watts' just discussion, like how Cinder has no problem and doing giving another objection, another thing that's not really foreseen in the plan, and it's pretty pointless. Pointless to do, even though there could be other ways. Well, Watts. Well, what's like, well, yes, I know, we are gonna go down that anyway, but, well, it, quote is on the list, but, well, but, that would be a reckless war. No, some, what's with a secret thing? Is it, they really need to be secretive? I don't know, really. Yeah, after they basically make a deal that, kill Crow, they get the relic. And then we go jump to to what I after that we basically jump to Blake. But then, but for now let's continue that and basically say she sends Vernal to to spy on them because she doesn't have any kind of a spy, and she has the ability to turn on to a crow, so that would kind of be helpful for in the teleportation would be pretty useful, but all right for some reason. So, so basically, she says that even if the deal goes down as it will go, I'm 100% sure that they're not gonna keep their part of the bargain, which is just basically to leave them alone if they get that relic. Now, after that, after that, that whole discussion, basically says that in the chaos, they grab the relic and leave. Which was a pretty decent talk. I mean, I would wish they had a little more action, but alright. I guess it makes sense, everything, everything that they say. Now, after that, we jump to Blake. And oh... Um, and oh man, they did not really increase anything except giving a different cliffhanger. So yes, I'm pretty sure this is the part where LB were gonna have their dislikes because the only thing that really gets result in this app part is the fact that Blake and Ilya are gonna face off. Yes, and believe me, the battle is gonna be pretty this but the battle is gonna be a satisfaction, at least for some people. Yeah, that's true. Now, we're not gonna be spoiling the battle, but we're just saying it's gonna be pretty great. Or at least for us. Now, what they basically state, now what basically happens is, 
Gira is still battling Corsic and Fenric, Fenric or the Fox Brothers. And they basically, and he, even though we, a lot of people thought that he was going to die, he does seem to be pretty well, well trained to battle other people. And after, after a little battling with the elemental rods, Sun, appe Sun appears and then Blake follows, which for some reason they decide to knock her out with this pointy part because I don't know. Would it make a lot more sense to go with that? Bottom part because you know that you could knock her out, but I guess not. But I guess that's the only, they had to free that them from those icicle shadow clone that Blake made. Now, when some person said that they could knock them out, well, I'm pretty sure it's better having them be. But I guess that she wanted to, to know about what the with mother of so she decided to uh, talk, which. Basically, we had some good, nice conversation where he basically says, I don't know, I got ambushed straight away. Shrey says, Gira and Blake basically says, First, we'll take them down, then we go. But instead, Gira tells us to go find Mother, to find Kale. Which, alright. Gira is basically like, okay, like explaining to everybody why it's better to have the number advantage. And Blake, and he's like, You are trying to convince me that. That you find not just a waste of space. And the real world basically. You're trying to convince me there's something else. Your son, your, this boy can do except. Fuck you. Q in the back. Fuck you. Q. Well that chef and prove it. Yeah that's basically what Q was saying. It was basically we was speaking about but saying a different way. And then basically son's. Says that he he got yeah he has that and he is and he based it and he is has on play by one night he thinks when that that I want to stop these creeps since the day we first met, which was the, the fact that this guy was suspicious of them even before the whole spying thing and. Then be and then after Blake leaves, he basically says it, that he won't fail him, but he's like, "Shut up!" And he says like, "All right," and they basically go to battle. Then we come back to Raven, which I already referenced. But then at the end of the episode, he, she confronts Ilya because she's hiding in the garden, the door that Kelly is, and just all right, yeah. And they end up with that battle being a cliffhanger. Which I would say, uh, which is basically not much. It just has more of an equal battle between Kosuik, Fennec, and Sun. As it seems like Kali is still able to, to, well, to somewhat, is still, oh, uh, still alive. And then we get another boost that battle. Also, I forgot to mention the fact that Raven went to, went to, Mistral City, they and just so before any one of you says anything, she's not waiting there to talk to Crow. She went to Lionheart just so if any there's anything, because I'm thinking that everyone's saying what would have used so it doesn't make sense and all that. No, oh, well, this episode was probably one of the worst episodes of the volume. Not the worst episode, of, maybe. We, be in the top 10 worst episodes so far, but otherwise it's a pretty good episode. Yeah, it's pretty great. I mean, although we wish for more action, it will, the things they say weren't really the worst things. Although the comedy between Sun and Gira was pretty... the yeah, spot on. I'm just gonna sh show how, although Gira is more of a serious person, Sun and Sun's more of a comedic person, it is... This how we basically see this comparison. It's, yeah, it was a pretty this decent episode. I personally don't exactly like it that mu much, but I don't really hate it as much. Me too. No, yeah. I hope you like this video. I hope you're gonna leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future, and share this video with your family and friends. And I cannot wait.
to see all of you next time. Bye. Bye.